Next up, the camera tab. The camera tab in Keyshot is where we have all of our control over our viewport here. So we're, Keyshot works off of a single viewport primarily. So we're looking at our model and as you can see, if I'll hide some of these settings right here, but as we ch make changes to our existing camera or our viewport, that's being respected right here. So if you wanna set it so that we're looking directly at the center of the model, I can right click and look at model center. Uh, and if I wanna make sure I'm squared up, I could type in specific values. So minus 90, we'll square that up, inclination of zero, right? So now I'm looking directly at my model uh, with zero inclination from the front. But as we make changes to it in our real-time view, we can see those values being respected over here under our position and orientation information. So let's say we had this view and this was something that we were gonna use in a rendering. What we could do is we could just hit this little icon right here and we can add that as a camera. So if I click add camera, I get this setting of camera one. So that camera has been saved. Let's save another view. So let's say we're gonna zoom in and we're gonna do a detail shot. If I change my camera setting and then I zoom in and then let's look at this part right here, you'll notice that under my list of cameras, I see camera one unsaved. The reason for that is I'm still using camera one, but Keyshot doesn't know whether or not it should save these changes or abandon them. So if you wanna save a second camera on top, we can just hit the add camera button and this will be camera two. And to make this a little bit easier, I'm gonna rename this camera and let's call this one zoomed in, right? So now zoomed in is our second camera that we saved. I can go back to camera one. It remembers the position and orientation of that camera. Zoomed in is now our zoomed in camera. So what does that mean when I move my camera and I get that unsaved. Well, what I could do here, let's say I had changed my camera like I'm doing right now. I'll right click and hit look at, and let's zoom in. And let's say this is what we wanna have for our zoomed in camera view. Something like this, a little bit more uh, dynamic. Well, if I hit this little floppy disk icon here, that will save zoomed in as the new zoomed in camera. So if I toggle back to camera one, I get this camera, zoomed in will be that second camera that we saved. Uh, or let's say I was working and I accidentally moved my camera and I was like, oh man, how did I get that camera back? Well, right here, I can hit this little reset camera icon and it'll take me back to the save camera. If this ever happens to you and you're accidentally changing cameras, you can always right click and toggle a lock on the camera or you can just hit this little icon right here. You'll notice that all my settings go gray because now if I try to click and drag and move that camera, uh, I can't make any changes to it because I've locked that camera. Now when I toggle through my cameras, camera one I can make changes to, that zoomed in camera I can't make changes to. You can always toggle to free camera. So free camera doesn't retain any so associations and you can always move it and you can't lock the free camera. But these are some basic controls you have over your camera. What else can you do with your camera? Well, we've been right clicking on our model and hitting look at. This is also where you can hit a button, select look at point, and now when you click on your model, that'll change where our camera is looking at. So now I'm looking directly at the corner or on the screw right here but the look at point is gonna be defined uh, by either hitting this button or right clicking and setting the look at point. We also have some pre-made standard views. So if you wanna get a front view, I can use the front. Uh, if you want a right view, right, I can use these. Uh, these are pre-made uh, and this is a great way of working with labels. So if you ever need to place a label using normal position, I can use these to try to get my camera oriented in the correct spot. Um, but Camera one, we'll go back here and let's talk about some of our lens settings. We have three basic types of lenses within Keyshot. So first is perspective, and this is how we see the world. Uh, we see it in perspective uh, where we have these lines of convergence. So this perspective slider is equivalent to a focal length with a camera lens. So something like 70 is going to give us less perspective. So this is probably more how we would see an object at this scale. Uh, if I type in a really big value, our lines are gonna be a little bit more parallel, but they're not gonna, they will still converge 
a lot of product photography is shot using something like a 200 millimeter lens. The smaller the value, the more perspective you'll see. The default of 35 actually is a, a pretty good amount of perspective. I'll usually back that down to something like 55 or 70. So it's, uh, it's not as visible and uh, my model doesn't look as huge. Right, but we can control that slider. If you're working with backplates, you can type in the focal length of your backplate uh, and get the correct perspective that way. So perspective, this is how we see the world. That's one lens type. Another lens type is orthographic mode. So orthographic mode is how CAD sees your models. So all the lines here are parallel, right? So uh, in this case, your verticals are all vertical and anything along the X and Y axes, they're all going to be parallel. This is not how we actually see the world, but this is how it is defined in math. For example, a big cardboard box, right? When we look at it, we're going to see it in perspective. Um, whereas realistically, uh, that's actually all parallel lines. Uh, the third lens type that we have is a shift lens. Uh, this is probably going to be most common in architecture, uh, interior, or some very specific product renderings. But if I take a look at my model here, you'll notice that I do have a little bit, bit of convergence, right? So I've got these lines going out to the left and I've got some going out to the right. I also have the lines that should be vertical converging down. So the reason this is happening is because we see the world with multiple perspective points. So this is an example of three point perspective. If you're working with architecture or interior views, a lot of times you don't necessarily want those or something like a smartphone case. What we can do is we can enable a shift lens. If I enable the shift lens, nothing changes until I scroll down and I hit estimate vertical shift. A shift lens, really what it, you could think of it as is a two point perspective. If I hit this button, it's going to change my camera position. And what I could do is move this slider here that says vertical shift and I'll bring my camera back up. But now when I look at my model, let's zoom out a little bit so we get it in full frame. Uh, but the vertical shift here has made it so this is now a two point perspective image. My verticals are truly vertical. They're all parallel and all my other lines are converging out either onto the left or to the right. But I can always adjust the amount of perspective so you can see that perspective coming into play, right? And if I change the position of my camera, I'll want to re-estimate the vertical shift. And let's grab this and let's drag it back down. But instead of moving the camera with our real-time view, we can just, just grab those uh, vertical shift sliders. But now I have vertical lines. So this is also not how we see the world. This is more of kind of an illustration style or something used in particular render types. Um, but a shift lens will give us essentially two point perspective. I'll set that back to perspective mode, right click on my model, or actually I'll just reset this. And that goes back to camera one, which had a little bit of three point perspective in there and that's fine with me. But that's an overview of the three different lens settings. Let's talk about some of the lens effects. So the lens effects, depth of field. This is going to be our big one for the lens effects. So what is depth of field? Uh, depth of field exists with our eyes or real camera lenses. Uh, what it does is it allows you to create a point of focus. So for example, here I will check depth of field and everything goes blurry all of a sudden. Well, it goes blurry because I haven't chosen a point of focus. So, what I can do is now if I hit select point of focus, I can just click anywhere on my model and wherever I click is going to be in focus. So now if I click here, this is in focus. If I click here, that's in focus. If I click the rear corner, that's in focus. So it's a little bit drastic right now. So what we can do, this looks a little too crazy. We can control our F stop slider. So this F stop slider controls the amount that's in or out of focus. So what? we'll toggle over to a free camera so that we can save a camera with depth of field. Let's right click on this part and hit look at. I'll pan the camera a little bit and now I'll click select point of focus, click on that part right there. And now what I could do is there's still too much depth of field so I can type in bigger values. And this is good to know in Keyshot, you can always type in bigger values. Let's try something like 12 uh, or 30, right? So now I have a wider field of view. 
So you can go big or go small with these values depending on your units and the scale, right? But now this is in focus and we're gradually going out of focus. And I can save this camera as depth of field camera. Right? It's going to take a little bit longer to render uh, because it has some more calculations, but eventually we'll get a nice smooth resolution of our image uh, using the depth of field. So we saved camera one, we saved camera two, and we saved our depth of field camera. So just a quick overview of the different cameras, the different lens settings, and then working with depth of field. Watch the next tutorial video for an overview of render settings and output. For more tutorials, quick tips, and webinar recordings, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, and you can learn more at keyshot.com learning. Thank you for watching.